Well, happy holidays, folks. I hope you like my uh, festive Christmas tree. I probably maxed out my uh, creativity for the month creating that, but hey, you know what? I think it turned out just fine. Anyway, what we're going to be working on today is this Tyco Mantua Canadian Pacific 460 locomotive. I picked this thing up for an absolute song at the OVAR train show. It was only five Canadian dollars, which is just uh, pretty much unheard of for an old Tyco Mandawa, so that's pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, this particular one doesn't run, uh, so it needs some work. Although the uh, motor was responsive, which is not something I was uh, entirely expecting there, so that's a really good sign. So I think generally what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be uh, disassembling it, uh, we're going to be cleaning a lot of parts, and then we're going to add some fresh oil, and hopefully it will run just in time for the holiday season. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty good. I'll, uh, I'll begin by taking it over to the track just to uh, show you guys exactly uh, what's going on, uh, exactly what I'm talking about, and then uh, we'll be able to start disassembling it and uh, hopefully figure out what the problem is. All right, so we've got her all set up on the track. It really is a beautiful locomotive. I could probably use a, a bit of a, a dusting, but uh, you know what? It will be okay. Anyways, we're going to give her some power here. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys heard that, but it was making a bit of noise. And uh, if we could probably just give it a little movement on the track there. You can see it is somewhat responsive there. I mean, it, it, it you can see the wheels are turning a bit. So... Uh, there is some life in this locomotive, it just needs a little bit of help. So as you guys can see, this thing is far from flawless, but I would also say that it's far from hopeless. So I've still got a pretty good feeling we'll be able to get her running by the end of this video, but only time will tell. Uh, anyway, before we actually get into uh, disassembling this locomotive, I just want to quickly show you guys some uh, mail I received. I actually got this a while back, but I just haven't gotten around to showing it on camera. So we're going to uh, do that today. And I'll begin with this letter. Now, uh, if we open it up here, uh, we've got uh, two uh, American uh, Federal Reserve notes, as you can see. Very nice. These are probably worth like a million Canadian dollars. So thank you very much for that. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> this uh, wonderful letter, you guys can read that out for yourselves if you want. It says, hello, SMT. My name is Jordan Nordhaus. I've been watching you since you had like 700 subscribers. You have a really cool layout and channel. You should go to Minnesota instead of Wisconsin because Minnesota is better. And when you're in Sona, you're going to make that song. I don't know. Train joke. Uh, I wanted to be an engineer for Canadian Pacific, but they said I could. They couldn't train me. Fix the royal blue, please. Buy Chuff Chuff number two. And how is Nerf Cat? So awesome. And uh, it also appears we have uh, a little illustration of uh, the uh, cursed Acela being thrown by the kid in uh, 2014. So uh, if I just show that right there, you can see. Uh, uh, right there is the Acela on the track, there's the kid, and uh, there's the Acela resting in peace. So anyway, thank you for sending that letter. Uh, I also sent uh, uh, some rail joiners, so uh, thank you Jordan for that. You've been a great supporter of the channel. And by the way, those rail joiners are being used on the uh, track I set up to uh, run trains in the snow. So you contributed to that. Anyway, we've got another uh, little uh, package here actually. If we uh, open this up, uh, we've got a letter in here somewhere. I'm pretty sure this is it. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Let's have a look here. Yes, there we are. And uh, if you guys want to read it for yourselves, there it is. And uh, it says, Hello, Harrison, a.k.a. SMT. Greetings from Pennsylvania. Or should I say, howdy, folks. I love your videos on train repairs. Included are some things I made with my 3D printer. Sheds or outhouses, they would work good on your farm. Feel free to repaint them if you'd like. A searchlight, that's the drawing to show where the batteries go. You can put a flat car or building. A coupler pockets, they fit on old Tycos like Bicentennial locomotives if you have. Uh, you may need some sanding or trimming. Also... Coupler holders can be used on freight cars. I made them to repair Athern B car. 
uh, Nerf cat so he can ride on the rails and watch you while you're working. A lifelike chassis to repair when you're working on. I had a few extra gears. Uh, they fit some old lifelike locomotives with cracked axles. If you go on eBay and search for small plastic gears, you can find them. They were less than 20 cents each. And then it says right here, I'm not necessarily selling any of the items, but if one of your subscribers needs any of the items, I can print them and send them for a dollar or two. I'm currently busy working on a new larger train display, and I have a brand new Lionel O-Gage on, uh, on lay on the way uh, that I plan to pay off by Christmas. Uh, check out my channel, DB Tech, and uh, signed off by uh, David. So I've got a few Davids on the channel. Uh, anyway, thank you, DB Tech, for sending that. And uh, let's show some of the stuff that was sent in here. Gears for life, like 14 tooth. These might come in handy at some point. So there are the gears. I believe these are the 3D printed coupling pockets. That's pretty cool. I haven't had a lot of experience with the 3D parts, so I'll be interested to check those out. Uh, I don't know what this is. Oh, this is uh, the searchlight, I believe. Let's get her out there. Cool. I'll have to wire that up at some point. And these are the batteries for the searchlight. Here's the little shed. Uh, another shed. This is, uh, I think, a little N scale chassis. Get this off here. Yeah, a little N scale chassis. Might be able to use that as parts. And uh, finally, we got a. Uh, a model of uh, everyone's favorite cat, Nerf Cat, or Wildebeest. He's got a lot of identities on the channel. Anyway, very cool. So thanks again for sending all that stuff. Now, with that, let's finally get around to uh, fixing this uh, pretty devil. To start, we will, uh, I guess, I don't know, remove, re remove these bottom screws here. You know, on uh, every other Tyco Manwa steamer I've worked on, these hold basically a plate which uh, keep all the wheels intact. So provided we remove this, we can actually see what the condition of the wheel bearings are like and uh, hopefully do some work. I don't think we have to take the top of the locomotive off unless there's a problem with the motor, which hopefully there isn't. I, I think our problems are mainly just with uh, old oil and uh, dirt preventing the locomotive from uh, running. So provided we remove this. Yep, there we go. And as you can see, we're inside. There are all the wheel bearings. Let's see what kind of condition they're in. There's a scary thing, which is remove the wheels from them. Yeah, those will be fun to get in later. Anyway, yeah, got a little bit of dirt in there. That's about what I was expecting. So we'll just put some alcohol in there and clean them out. Nothing too bad. Sometimes the grease in these things can really be... Uh, jammed in there but if we just work at this for a while it will uh, clean up just fine all right so there are our bearings all uh, taken care of they're looking pretty good so we're just gonna let the uh, alcohol evaporate out of those and we'll uh, now focus on the actual axles themselves pretty much the same process you just put some uh, alcohol on like a piece of paper towel and you just uh, you know kind of clean them Just grab them like this and you just kind of scrub around them and uh, you can see it lifts a little bit of dirt there. And while we have the wheels out, may as well give uh, those each a clean too. In this case, you only have to clean the uh, tops, not the sides, because these uh, take in their power through bearings, which is a very good way to pick up power. And since we cleaned out the bearings, they'll do fine. All right, so these are all cleaned up now, so I think those should be good to go back into the bearings. This is a really good design for the... Uh, rods here. Most of these engines you have to line all this stuff up. These ones just kind of go in I guess. There we go. That's good. Okay guys I've got something to admit. 
When you take out that screw, the motor becomes loose. Usually they're held in from the back, but not in this case. So now I have to uh, actually disassemble the locomotive to access this. And this is where we might have some more trouble. But if we see, if we just kind of slide this forward. Here's our motor right there. See, they usually, the screw goes in kind of further up, so that's not common. This one in here, I'll just clean up the commutator while I'm in here. Uh, while holding it there, I'll just tighten it. Make sure those gears are actually, yeah, wheels aren't turning freely. Motor seems to be pretty secure in place, so that's all good. Uh, three parts oil, one part grease. So now all we have to do is reassemble this, which in theory shouldn't be too difficult. Yep, that's it. I'll just put this in, should line up. All right, so with our locomotive back together, everything should be pretty much ready. There's just one more thing we have to do, which is to clean the wheels on the tender because uh, in this case, the front picks up a positive or negative current, and so does the back. So you need to have, obviously, the way that the positive and negative current, you know, come and go. Uh, those both need to be clean. So, uh, yeah, we're going to clean this out, because otherwise it's not going to function properly. So, we'll uh, quickly do that, and then we should be pretty much ready to uh, test our locomotive. All right, so we got those wheels pretty much clean. So now uh, all we're gonna do just quickly before we run this thing, and you should pretty much do this on all steam locomotives, especially if they're a bit older. Let's put some really light oil on each of the uh, little pivots there. Uh, it really doesn't have to be much as always, but it does make a uh, difference in performance. If uh, parts are moving, they generally need oil. So that should be enough. Anyway, let's go test our locomotive. All right, so it's now all set up on the track once again. Now let's try giving her some power. Oh, I saw it for a second there. Can you see that? Hey, look at her go. Our stopper got some cars there, but let's try a uh, reverse. Oh yeah. Okay, a little bit of derailing there. I even saw the front light for a second. Come on. Okay, so reversing, not so good, but. <laughs> yeah, I spoke too soon. It seems to have some derailing problems. There we go. What a beauty. Yeah, it's not flawless. I'll use a bit more wheel cleaning, but she is a runner. So that's pretty good. All right, so it's now a bit of time later and I've done some more work on this thing. And uh, check this out, guys. That's not bad right there. And uh, if we give her a little bit more gusto, it uh, definitely can move at a pretty good clip. Let's bring her uh, back here. It's kind of on dirty track. And there we go. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's running pretty good. I mean, it can pretty much, like it's just about uh, creeping now. Let's see what's our lowest speed. Yeah, not quite creeping, but still, very good. Anyway, with that, I want to thank you guys for watching.